Hey guys, welcome back for the third and final instalment of my um, Pentax, the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, in this final instalment, I'm going to talk about um, the Pentax bodies, um, what's currently available, um, where I think you need to go if you want to capitalise on what I think is actually quite a strong market position. Um, and a little bit of a conclusion. So, here we go. So, Pentax, digital SLR bodies. I'm not going to talk about things like the Theater and the WG, the Rico Compact, anything branded Rico in this video. I'm just going to talk about Pentax and their DSLR range. The reason being, as I outlined in the first video, I think that Pentax is actually in a very strong position moving forward. Um, mirrorless is undoubtedly the technological leader. All of the um, major brands have now jumped on mirrorless and abandoned their DSLR ranges, leaving Pentax as the last DSLR maker standing um, once all the stocks run out and things progress. Um, I think that's a strong position to be in. There will always be people who want a DSLR. People are liking the switch from DSLR to mirrorless to the switch from film to digital. I don't think it's the same at all, really. Um, the fundamental switch there is not really there. Yes, the technology of mirrorless is advancing much faster than the technology of DSLR, but DSLR can move forward. Um, Pentax isn't at the pinnacle of the um, technology. There are things they can do to improve. They've proven that they can innovate in the past, so I think they can keep moving things forward if they want to. Um, so I'm just going to concentrate on the DSLR range here. I actually took myself by surprise here. I knew this information, but I didn't, I wasn't consciously aware of it. If you visit the uh, the Rico website and look for what DSLRs are currently in production, there's only four. Um, that really surprised me because obviously in the community groups, we talk a lot about the range and we talk about bodies that maybe aren't necessarily available anymore. And the other day, we had, I, there was a, a thread in uh, one of the Pentax groups on Facebook. Um, where somebody recommended a K3 to somebody, which I pointed out has been discontinued since 2016. Uh, no, 2018, did the K3 get, the K3 Mark I get discontinued? Anyway, they've been discontinued for quite some time now, um, so they might struggle to find one new. And lo and behold, lots and lots of people were able to provide links to retailers who still had new, unused Pentax K3s, not K32s, K3s available. That's got to be worrying for the brand, that they've produced these cameras, they've discontinued them, and retailers are still sitting on stock that they haven't managed to sell. That's got to be worrying to begin with. But anyway, if we go back to what is officially still in production, we only have four cameras. We have the 645Z, um, the medium format camera, which hasn't had a firmware update since 2017. So I understand why medium format shooters are feeling quite unloved. Even if they can't get a new body out, um, you would think all of the new bodies that have come out since the, the 645Z was released um, in the other DSLR range, there would be some sort of technology that could be pushed out on the firmware to at least make the medium format guys feel like Pentax are interested, um, even if a new body isn't ready. And we will come back to that. Um, now, in the APS-C range, we only have the KP and the K70. Um, both bodies that we would generally refer to as enthusiast bodies. And in the full frame range, we only have the K1 Mark II. Now, from a consumer perspective, I, assume, I suppose that does make things fairly simple. But, let's imagine we've got three types of consumer, I would say, when it comes to cameras. Um, Forgetting what they shoot, but from their position in the market, we have beginners, we have enthusiasts, um, sorry about that, and we have people who are trying to earn a living from their photography, or at least make some money from it, so we call those professionals. Obviously, people in all those brackets can produce professional quality images, no doubt about that, um, but it doesn't even matter what camera they use. But depending on how you approach in your photography, whether you're a beginner, an enthusiast, or trying to earn some money from it, you want different things from cameras. I'm not talking about the things that you need for your type of photography, we're talking about the things that you 
necessarily need because of the expected use case. Um, so, for example, the beginner doesn't care about dual card slots. Um, many enthusiasts don't care about dual card slots. Many professionals don't care about dual card slots. But dual card slots has become a thing that professionals look for. It's a form of backup, and we all know you can never back up enough. Um, now, I know lots of professionals don't really care and they don't really think it's a big issue. Um, but if you've got the choice between having one and not having one, there's no cost difference. You're going to choose to have one, aren't you? Dual card slots, that is, I would think. But most people try to earn a living um, from their photography or make some money from their photography. So if we look at the APS-C range, where Pentax was always strongest, we have the K70, which would have been uh, considered an when it was launched would have been a mid-range to entry-level model. When it was launched, the KS2 was still in production as well. Um, K, the KS range seems to have dropped off a cliff um, now. But anyway, so if you're coming into the brand for the first time, the K70 is probably the obvious body for you as a uh, beginner camera. Um, it's actually much more the beginner camera. It's a lot better than you would get from most brands for a beginner camera. Um, no doubt about that. But there it is. There's your entry point, the K70. Then we have the KP, which is seen as the higher end um, enthusiast body, really. And I know there are professionals who use them. No reason why you couldn't use the K70 for professional work. Professional work is not about the body you, work, you hold, it's about the photograph you produce. But the KP is a, I don't want to say niche on it, it is a, it's not the flagship. They said it wasn't the flagship when they released it, but it is the top body in the APS-C range now. Um, it doesn't have dual card slots, so it's not really something I think that most professionals would want as their main body. Um, although I'm sure there are people who use it and use it quite successfully. But it's also a unusual body. It's more of a quirky body. It's an aberration from the traditional DSLR shapes that uh, Pentax has produced. Um, I tried one out in the store when they were first released and I found it incredibly uncomfortable to hold, even with the large grip. Now I know we're expecting what's being called the K, the K new, a new APS-C body um, sometime in 2020. Um, and we expect it to be a new flagship, but I don't think Pentax have actually said that it will be. Um, so we'd expect to see it with dual card slots really. Um, Hopefully, an upgrade in the F in the autofocus system and a few other bells and whistles that take a step on from the K32. But we've been without a, I hate using the word pro, prototype body for APS-C range for quite some time. And is this because Pentax thinks that APS-C isn't for pros? Um, if they do, I think they're very much mistaken. There are lots of people using APS-C and smaller sensors in the professional setting quite successfully. Um, it's a very valid choice to make, I think, to uh, choose that smaller sensor for the extra reach, the lighter bodies, etc., um, lighter lenses. So I can't agree with them there. And I think if they want to capitalise on their market position as potentially the last DSLR manufacturer standing, they have to be able to offer something for every photographer and every sensor size. Or they would, in my opinion, be better off dropping the sensor sizes or dropping some sensor sizes entirely um, because people don't want to come into a system that means they would have to transition to a new set of lenses if they decide to move up to the professional body. So if the K1 and the 645Z are the professional cameras, you're expecting all of your APS-C guys who maybe start off with the brand to decide to dump all of their DA lenses um, if they want to go full frame or they want to move to medium format. So I don't think that's really the best position to be in. Why Pentax has been so slow to produce new bodies, I don't know. I don't know if it's um, shortage of fun in R&D, um, if it's because of general decline in the market or if there's something they just haven't decided about where they're at. But then we look at the full frame range as well. One body, the K1 Mark II. Now, yeah, it's a very, very capable body. But it has some issues with it. Um, that means it doesn't fit all types of photography. Um, so, again, if they want to be the last DSLR manufacturer st standing, 
you need to offer something for every type of photographer. Um, I would suggest that they possibly need, I don't know if they really need an entry level or an enthusiast level um, full frame body. I think the fact that the K-mount is used for APS-C and, and full frame means that somebody can transition from APS-C to full frame. Hobbyists or enthusiasts who want to become professional or just want the full frame. Um, and it can be managed. But somebody, but I think they also need to have that pro grade APS-C body there for those who don't want to transition to full frame. Um, I don't think they have to have an entry level full frame body, but I don't think it would hurt. And I don't know that it would cost them that much, really. To um, I don't think Pentax is keen on putting out crippled bodies, just taking an existing body and crippling it a bit so they can charge a bit less for it. Um, and that's great for them. They haven't got the Canon cripple hammer um, in order to differentiate their bodies. So that's great. I, I appreciate that. But when it comes to professionals, um, there are different types of photographies, I'm sure you're aware. And the K1 Mark II doesn't fit for all of them. Um, so as Pentax has said, that really they only want to target themselves at landscape photographers and keen enthusiasts. Um, I mean, what's the K1 II good for, really? It's good for landscape, definitely, no doubt about it. Um, it's good for portrait photography. Um, it's not particularly good for sports photography. Now, I'm not saying it can't be used for these things, just that when you compare the whole market, it's not a, a camera body for, that's in sports photographers. Um, it's possibly usable by wildlife photographers, um, but I think wildlife actually covers quite a large variety of things. Um, and the lens range maybe just doesn't stack up for the, six, the K1 to for um, a lot of wildlife photographers. But this seems to me is something that's really easily remedied. The reason it doesn't fit for event photographers necessarily, um, although I know there are some very good event photographers who use it, um, is because of the slow buffer. The, the buffer isn't very deep, the frames per second aren't very fast. Now those two things, some people confuse them as being the same issue, they're not really. You can have a camera that has a low frames per second, but has a deep buffer. Um, you can feel when the buffer in a camera is being reached. Um, as you do, if you continue shooting, you hold the button down and the rate at which it's taking the picture starts to slow down dramatically. That's because the buffer isn't getting the information from the card, from the camera onto the cards fast enough, so it's filling up. If you imagine it's just like a, a jug of water and the small hole in the bottom, so it's filling up faster than it's emptying. Um, so it is possible to get a really deep buffer, even without increasing the frames per second. And I don't think everybody needs these massive counts of frames per second that people talk about. And I don't think event photographers really need them either. But what they do want is a deep buffer so that they can keep working at their four or five frames per second um, for a prolonged period of time. I think the K1 in raw mode or raw plus um, slows down in about 18 photos. That's when you start to see the slowdown. It might be a little bit more. Um, but not very deep at all. And then once it hits that buffer filled, it actually takes quite a long time to catch itself up and empty it. Now that is a problem for event photographers who are constantly moving, maybe have things that aren't going to stop. Um, I shot a, a dance show um, before Christmas last year, um, which was a kids dance show, had several acts in it and went on over a long period of time. But my aim was to get individual headshots of each of the kids, or close-ups of each of the kids as they were performing, and capture the overall essence of the performance in the show. That means a lot of clicking. Um, I was never in continuous mode, but I hit the buffer on a few times. I had a second body on my hip, so I just switched over. Um, all well and good, it was totally doable. But really, when I put two bodies out to cover an event, I'm putting different focal lengths on them, and I don't want to be forced to switch from the focal length I really want to use, to another body with a different focal length because of the buffer. I want to switch because I want to switch because of the focal length and because I'm composing my images. But I think this would be really, really easy for Pentax to fix. You could put out a K12S, say S for sport or X or whatever, it doesn't matter. Just take the current sensor out, the 36 megapixel sensor, stick a 24 or a 20 megapixel sensor in there, full frame, would give fantastic low light performance, having all that space in the lower pixel density. Um, 
stick a bit of an extra buffer in there and you'd be there. Now, that can of take that much to do. The sensors exist, um, upgrading the buffer part doesn't exist and then all of a sudden you've got two bodies that look identical, small mark on the difference between the two, covering both scenarios and I think you find that second body would appeal to an awful lot of people. I would have one of each, personally, in that scenario. Uh, currently I have a K1, is first version is my main body, and I still use a K3, it's my second body, because they've not introduced anything that would make me replace it at this point. So I think that's a really simple thing to do. And I think it's something they should think about is the move the other lines forward. So when they've got this K3, K new coming out, which we hope is going to be a flagship, um, a flagship body um, for the APS-C line. Personally, I think there should always be two bodies come out quickly behind each other. There should be one that's focused on what Pentax has traditionally done: high high megapixels, extremely good image quality. The frames per second doesn't matter. The depth of the buffer doesn't really matter because it's for people who are not in any hurry taking slow photos, and then. Bring out another one, even if it's the last generation sensor you've got in there. Um, so bring out another one with a new, smaller sensor in there with a smaller megapixel count so you've got smaller files. And then you're outputting faster and a deeper buffer, hopefully. And even the buffer that's already in the camera wouldn't need wouldn't be consumed so quickly with smaller files so that you've got a camera that caters for both purposes. I mean, if you want it to be really clever, a switch on the camera so you could switch your I don't know 36 megapixel camera down to 24 megapixels but still use the whole size of your sensor the only reason thing that would do really is make the files smaller but the image quality would suffer so I think it would have to be a hell of a technological innovation to make that work the simpler thing is two bodies that look exactly the same apart from one mark on them that differentiates them the smaller sensor, bigger buffer ideally, but actually with a smaller sensor, smaller file sizes, it'll feel like it's got a bigger buffer. I think they should do that in the full frame models, and I think they should do that also in the uh, top line APS-C range. I don't think they need to do it for the entry levels, I don't think they need to do it for the enthusiast uh, camera, they just need to do it for the flagships. And then when we have the, the medium format, they're in a really strong position. It was pointed out by uh, Rob on some of the comments that there are lenses that are missing, like tilt shifts and things like that. Um, and yeah, he's a medium format user, so he's in a much better position than me to say. But I'm sure that the level of detail and effort Pentax has put over the years into producing high quality landscape images, pixel shift, for example, um, it's, that sort of thing is really appealing to medium format users. Um, being able to pull that level of detail out, a lot of people who shoot medium format shoot products, um, and they sh shoot tethered, and they want to produce outstanding images. And pixel shift would be really useful for them. A few years ago, probably on the six forty five, and as Ed was released, pix pixel shift probably wasn't a big idea for medium format because people were shooting with flash and pixel shift requires to be on a tripod and would require constant light but constant lights have come on a long way since then um, there are an awful lot of photographers um, who have constant lights and flashlights were using them together and um, use them separately and use them for the appropriate job the cost of lighting has come down a lot and the quality of lighting has gone up a lot um, particularly in the continuous lighting section so yeah innovations like that um, I think would be awesome, but I've really, really in medium format world now just want to bump in um, image quality by a bigger sensor, a bit megapixel wise anyway. So yeah, that's where I think we're at really. I think the current lineup is really quite weak um, because of the lack of flagships, but I don't think it would take a lot, as I've said, in order to get Pentax right up there and able to offer something for everybody who wants to stick with DSLR. Um, you only need one extra body added to the uh, full frame range. Um, I mean, I think an entry level full frame body would be a very clever move um, and would do them well. But yeah, two full frame bodies. So you need something to complement the K1 Mark II. Um, 
so that's got a smaller sensor perhaps a faster ride speed and deeper buffer um, faster frame per second would be good but not essential i think it's more important to have that deeper buffer um, so people don't feel like they're hitting it and we've got the knu coming as we call it um, in the community for the aps-c range um rumors is going to be called the k2 but i don't know because obviously there was a k2 film camera anyway so we've got the we've got the digital APS-C K new coming. I think it would be a master stroke if they could release two bodies, um, even if there was a short lag between the two of them. One, traditional Pentax, high quality images, um, very detailed, and one that takes advantage of faster speeds. I don't think they have to filter that down to the um, entry level and enthusiast bodies at all. Um, yeah, I think the future could be bright for Pentax, but I don't know that it will be. Um, they're a company that doesn't say a lot about what they're doing um, and we'd love to know um, what their plans are. So yeah, I mean, I'd say watch this space, but maybe we'll recover and talk again in a year about this sort of thing and see if um, what's happened I mean, when the K1, the K new is being released. Um, and while we've got the specs for it at least, uh, we can talk about where they're going. But yeah, I was really shocked to see that there's only currently four DSLR bodies in production. Um, I really hope that they can pick things up. I do think that they need three more bodies in production. Anyway, obviously that's just my opinion. And who am I? Just some bloke in a daddy pig t-shirt. Um, so be interested to know what you think's coming, what you think they should do. Um, I know there are quite a few of you guys out there who think that they should concentrate on the landscape and just forget about everything else. Um, or that wind just like me should just shut up. Um, but really, I don't really think there's necessarily any ugly here about Pentax other than the lack of an APS-C um, flagship. Yeah, actually the ugly is the fact that retailers still have stock of cameras that were discontinued two years ago. Um, that is particularly worrying, I think. Um, it shows how little demand there is there for the brand in retail. Um, that's a bit sad, really. Anyway, um, but equally, I know there's not many places got K1s, and this is a tangent, sorry, they've got K1 Mark 1s available. They're quite, they're becoming quite hard to find. Um, so it tells me that the full frame shift was actually successful for Pentax. Um, well, of course, a lot of places did send their K1s back and get them converted to K1 2s. But anyway, let me know in the comments below um, what you think Pentax should do, and why you think they should do it. Um, that's really important. The why is really impo uh, important. And uh, if you want to see more videos from me on Pentax and photography related things, um, hopefully we can get out of the kitchen. I know there's an echo in here. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Um, let me know that you're actually interested in things. Um, I posted a video last week, Pentaxian's yearbook's out. Um, if you haven't seen it already, I'm sure there'll be a link comes up for it at the end. In fact, I'll make sure that it does. Um, <coughs> If you want the Pentaxians yearbook, go out and uh, order it. There's a limited time to place the orders. And also, I'll put a link in the description below to a Facebook group for the Pentaxians yearbook so that you can be alerted next year when it comes to um, making submissions. Um, anyway, if you can find something to shoot, get out there and shoot. Actually, don't get out there and shoot unless you're a tell you on your own, of course. Um, just try and enjoy your photography in this unusual world we're currently living in. Take care.